perfect landing. It's astonishing all the garbage we're taught in school it turns out to be a complete and total lie. And the people that actually spawn those agendas to propagate the nonsense and the lies that we're supposed to believe in. Yeah, every commercial and everything we actually see in the media makes Einstein out to be like almost alien-like superintelligence. And the truth turns out to be something not different, but totally the opposite. <laughs> um, I'd like to go on to and quote to Nikola Tesla and actually talk about what he said relative to Einstein. I'd actually like to point out, and I think there's like five books written on this subject alone about where Einstein actually got his sources from. There's a lot of uh, free material about Hanra Poincaré. Um, it's on archive.org. All the stuff that you think Einstein was brilliant for is actually stolen by Einstein and taken from Hanre Poincaré. That would be H-E-N-R-I-P-O-I-N-C-E-R-E. -E. Also, too, and I have a copy of it, it's, it's a prestigious publication, Princeton University Press, and it's only one of. It's Einstein's travel diaries. You can actually find it on Amazon.com. The stuff that actually Einstein penned in his travel diaries is so nail-curling. I, I can't even tell you the stuff that he actually said in his travel diaries about the different uh, peoples and whatnot. But anyway, the only thing that you can actually say, Nikola Tesla comes close to foaming, and it's certainly not envy, comes close to foaming at the mouth about is against Einstein and relativity and this uh, idea of uh, curved space-time. I'm going to read a little thing here from uh, Nikola Tesla. This is, uh, Einstein has for years developed formulas explaining the mechanism of the cosmos. In doing so, he's overlooked many important factors, namely the fact that some of these heavenly bodies are increasing in distance from the sun. This is the same as uh, writing a business letter and forgetting the subject you wish to write about relative to Einstein when he's talking about in his... Uh, uh, cosmological constants, uh, which Einstein even himself later, and I don't know if that's because Nikola Tesla dumped all over it, but Tesla goes on saying, in order to explain this phenomena, Einstein has uh, invented the quantity uh, lambda. Uh, my theory of uh, gravitation explains this uh, phenomena perfectly. Um, <clears throat> Nikola Tesla, in relationship to relativity and Einstein, says, in the presence of large bodies, the notion that space becomes curved is equivalent to stating that something can act upon nothing. I, for one, refuse to believe in such a view. Um, he also, too, even wrote a poem against Einstein. It's called uh, Fragments of Olympian Gossip. He actually gave it at a dinner party, which I, uh, Tesla really loved dinner parties. He loved uh, being uh, heralded and toasted and fed a lot of uh, free food good free food. Relativity is a beggar wrapped in the purple uh, robes of a king who ignorant people take for a king. This theory, Tesla said, uh, wraps all these errors of relativity and fallacies and clothes them in a magnificent mathematical garb which fascinates, dazzles, and makes people blind to the underlying errors. This theory is like a beggar clothed in purple whom ignorant people take for a king. My conclusions are different from Einstein to that extent, uh, tend to disprove Einstein's theory. My explanations of natural phenomena are not so convoluted as his. And mine are simpler, and when I'm ready to make the full announcement, it will seem that I have proven my conclusions. These would be part of the, uh, the texts and the trunks of Nikola Tesla, which were seized by the government. By the way, when uh, Tesla died, all his papers that were seized, this is not like conspiracy or rumor, it's hardcore fact. They're seized by the Office of Alien Affairs. It's not about actually outer space aliens, meaning things ab extra to the government. Office of Alien Affairs. And they were seized by the great uncle of Orange Man, Orange Man is Bad, <laughs> John G. Trump. Um, Nicholas Tesla knew John G. Trump, the great uncle of, there's even like a two hour long interview of John G. Trump on uh, YouTube. Uh, Tesla thought that he was uh, quite unintelligent, actually. Um, Theory of relativity is a mass of errors and deceptive ideas violently opposed to the teachings of great men of science of past and even to that of uh, common sense. Einstein is a beggar dressed in the purple robes and made king by his dazzling mathematics that obscure the truth. Uh, since action and, re uh, action and uh, reaction are coexistent, it follows the supposed curvature of space-time is entirely 
impossible. The scientists from Franklin to Morse were clear thinkers and did not produce erroneous theories, as per referencing um, Einstein. Um, anyway, uh, this idea of uh, curved space-time and uh, Einstein's uh, idea creation of a lambda, uh, he considered that, Einstein considered that his biggest blunder and realized that the lambda, i.e. cosmological constant, was no longer necessary and uh, he scrapped the idea. Um, the relativity and uh, quantum is a bunch of uh, completely ludicrous nonsense. They actually expound things that are never input or output of any experiment, i.e. Uh, virtual particles. They keep calling it dark matter or dark energy. This is not my view, this is their own words. The reason why they call it dark matter or dark energy is two reasons. By their own admission, not mine, theirs, they call it dark because they have no idea what it is. That's not my opinion, that's what they themselves say. They uh, call it dark matter, the second half of which matter, because they're atomists, they're mathematicians. They're not uh, true scientists. They think everything is matter. When you're an atomist, everything is matter, a particle. When you're a hammer, everything is a nail. So this is the reason why they call it dark matter, dark energy. That's not my supposition, that's their own Admission. They think it's matter because they think everything's matter and they call it dark because they have no idea what it is. Um, they don't understand fields. They've never actually defined fields, but I'd actually like to get uh, further on into uh, Nikola Tesla. He talks about fields. Um, During the succeeding two years of intense concentration, I was fortunate enough to make far reaching discoveries. The first of which was my dynamic theory of gravity, which I have worked on in all details and hope to give to the world very soon. That would have been the stuff that uh, our government and John G. Trump seized after Tesla's death. It explains the causes of this force and uh, motions of heavenly bodies under its influence so satisfactorily. And I will put an end to idle speculations and false conceptions as that of curved space. In other words, Einstein is a fool, Nikola Tesla is saying here. According to the relativist, i.e. Einstein, space has a tendency to curvature owing to an inherent property or presence of celestial bodies. Granting a semblance of reality to this fantastic idea, it is still self-contradictory. Every action is accompanied by an equivalent reaction, and the effects of uh, the latter are directly opposite to those of the former. In other words, it's completely uh, untenable. There's no way I could... Uh, the theory of uh, gravity vis-a-vis -vis relativity and quantum can be true. Suppose that bodies act upon surrounding space causing curvature same. It appears to my simple mind that curved space must react on the bodies and producing the opposite effects. Therefore, then straighten out the curve. Since action and reac uh, reaction are coexistent, it follows that the supposed curvature space is entirely impossible. But even if it existed, it would not explain the motions of bodies as observed. This is the Im most important point only the existence of a field of force can account for them and its uh, assumption dispenses with uh, the nonsense of space curvature. All literature on the subject is futile and destined to oblivion. So are all attempts to explain the workings of the universe without recognizing, recognizing the existence of the ether and the indispensable function it plays in field phenomena. My second discovery was a physical truth of greatest importance as I've searched scientific records in more than half a dozen languages. For a long time, without finding the least anticipation, I consider myself the original discoverer of this truth, which can be expressed by this statement. There is no energy and matter other than that which it receives from its environment. There's a weird clicking noise. It's actually over there. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll edit that out. When he talks about the environment, he's actually talking about the ether. So when, uh, to make this more simple for people to understand it, uh, make this simpler, what Tesla says, there's no energy in atoms or gross matter other than that which it receives uh, from uh, the ether itself. In other words, of course, as I've talked about, all matter is a compound of hydrogen. And hydrogen itself is just super high energy light. So that is 100% in line with uh, what Nikola Tesla has said regarding matter. Um, reference to it, meaning Sivian has come more clear to me since then. Plus, rigorous related to molecules and atoms as well as the largest heavenly bodies. So anything that applies to matter. 
fundamentally both to hydrogen or anything more compound of hydrogen because all atoms and elements are compounds of hydrogen and also necessitatively applies to um, you know large heavenly bodies or anything of mass and magnitude. Uh, So-called gravity, as I've said before many countless times, is nothing other than uh, non-point source mutual mass acceleration or no different than electrostatic cling where you can, you know, I'm not going to do it here, you need to take two towels or pull them out of the laundry and they're sticking together and you hear that static cling. That same uh, field phenomena is no different than so-called gravity and also too no different than point source mutual mass acceleration of uh, so-called magnetic attraction which is not based in magnetism at all. Magnetism is the force vector of the loss of the uh, energy of the dielectric and uh, dielectricity is of course increasing inertia and acceleration towards null pressure, i.e. inertia. And no masses actually ever accelerate towards one another. Observationally they do, but that's also really, really important. If you could actually tell people what gravity actually is, that magnetic attraction does not exist, and heavenly bodies or masses and space are not accelerating towards one another, rather towards the lowest null plane of inertia between both, and that is demonstrably observable underneath the ferrule cell, and it also too accurately defines uh, field phenomena. But Nikola Tesla, like I said, uh, the closest uh, he comes to, you know, losing it or unhinging himself is uh, in regards to the ideas of curved space-time. Time is not a thing at all. It is a measure. Space has no properties. Space is no different than a shadow. Space is the after effect of a divergent magnetic field. Space is not a thing. Shadow is not a thing. Shadow is a noun in the dictionary, but a shadow is not a thing. Shadow is an absence of light. I'll lastly leave you with uh, fragments of Olympian gossip, uh, gossip of uh, Nikola Tesla. A uh, nice little poem from Nikola Tesla, part of which. Too bad, Sir Isaac Newton, they dimmed your renown and turned your great science upside down. Now a long-haired crank, <laughs> Einstein by name, puts on your high teaching all the blame. He says, matter and force are transmutable and wrong the laws that you thought were immutable. I am much too ignorant, my son, for grasping uh, crazy schemes so uh, finely spun. When Nikola Tesla in this poem talks about I am much too ignorant for grasping this nonsense, he's basically saying uh, intelligent people are the ones that are fools. You know, the very brilliant, highly intelligent uh, people. These are the ones that fall for nonsense and poppycock. We actually see this in the world, in every branch. The, oh, he's got a super high IQ. It's like these are the very people that, uh, you know, got injected with the safe and effective stuff that, you know, is causing, you know, oh, yeah, so-and-so died suddenly. Oh, is that a yeah, 20-year-old died suddenly? It's like, I thought the, and by the way, and Elon Musk, like three days ago, said that he felt like dying when he got the, the stab juice. And uh, it was in a tweet. It was like two days ago. Elon Musk said, I felt like dying. He basically said that he really, really, really regrets it. What people do with their own bodies is none of my business. I'm only telling you what Elon Musk said in a tweet. But we see these from, you know, highly intelligent people. These are people that are intelligent. And I keep telling people over and over and over again, there is no confusing intelligence, i.e. epistemic empirical knowledge, knowing a bunch of stuff, with wisdom, common sense. Wisdom and intelligence are not the same thing. And the intelligence that we actually ascribe to uh, Sir Albert Einstein, you should read his travel diaries. What Einstein wrote in his personal travel diary, and that's just one that's been translated uh, from, the, uh, from, from German, it's absolutely heinous. I can't even say in a video the stuff that he says in his travel diary. Off the hook, heinous. Off the hook. Kind of like uh, Kanye West sort of uh, heinous things said, except even worse than the stuff that Kanye said. Hmm. Hmm. Oh boy, it's a neat book to read. That what even the people that are around Einstein they don't like to admit to that fact. And that's only one travel diary that's been translated. So when Tesla says I'm too ignorant to fall for, he's basically saying I'm. Uh, I have wisdom, but I am not. Thank God, you know, super intelligent, because super intelligent people will fall for the garbage of quantum 
and Einstein and curved space-time. Do you know, for a fact, it's not my opinion, for a hardcore fact, these people do believe that what's coming out of a magnet, not that this is a magnet, is virtual photons, virtual particles. Absolutely an arbitrary abstraction, no basis in reality, no experiment is ever proven, disproven. It's just a fantasy. Magnets are emitting virtual photons. It's craziness. That's like saying magnets are emitting microscopic unicorns or leprechauns are causing the field around a magnet. That's nonsense. Look that up. Look up virtual particles or virtual photons. I mean, this is not science. It is mathematical quackery. And mathematical quackery, best quote about that is from Nikola Tesla, which I will end this video here. Nikola Tesla, today's, whoops, Today's scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments, and they wander off through equation after equation and eventually build a structure which has no relationship to reality. The scientists of today think deeply instead of clearly. One must be sane to think clearly, but one can think deeply and be quite insane. Yeah. My favorite quote from Nikola Tesla, right there, there ends it, so. You take your pick, like uh, if you went to public school, which is like an ultimate sin, there's like two pages about uh, American history, two pages about Einstein, and there's like a little paragraph, or half a paragraph about Nikola Tesla. If that's not a cover-up, then I don't know what is. Einstein was a brilliant man ever lived. Oh, he stole everything from Henri Poincaré. Um, his travel diary shows you what sort of person he was. No, 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 not Einstein. No, Nikola Tesla. James Clerk Maxwell, Pro Charles Proteus Steinmetz. Way, way, way more intelligent than Einstein. Most people have never heard of Charles Proteus Steinmetz. He's a little person. He's very, very uh, handicapped. He's like bent at the hips like a boomerang. Smoked a big old cigar. Really, 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 really intelligent. Even more intelligent than Nikola Tesla. He's the guy that perfected Nikola Tesla's AC motor, by the way. Laminated sheet steel, on and on. So, Anyway, thank you so much. If you ever want to contact me, my email is in the description below. Any donations are always warmly welcome. I'm free to join my Patreon and uh, talk to you by phone. To ask me any question you want. I always have chin wags, as they call them, via phone with people. Have a lovely late January in this kind of cold, rainy, miserable weather that I've got going on out here. But that's Kentucky. Usually not rainy and miserable in January, but it's better than snow and freezing rain. So that's how I'm going to look at it. Thank you, and Lux Everitas.